woke up that way too this morning. Um, yeah. Yeah. So good morning. It is Saturday, February 15th. We're here with Kathy Braston. Did I say that right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm super excited to hear from Kathy because um, I did, I, we met a couple times now and we went like mm -hmm. overnight on a retreat. And every time I talk to Kathy, she has more and more of her story where I'm just like, are you kidding me? <laughs> like every time. And her dedication to her health and to her fitness just is so inspiring to me. Um, and we'll get to all the jaw dropping. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Anyway, <laughs> but Kathy, tell me about yourself, just about your life. Like, where do you live? Who lives with you? Do you have children? Like, what's your day like? Um, I'm in Nutripoli. Um, so it's outside Allentown, if anybody doesn't know. Um, married. Um, I have two kids. My daughter's married and she lives in Allentown with her husband. They've been married like a year and a half. Uh, my son just recently got out of the Navy and he moved back in with us. So he is with us temporarily as he gets his second career going. And we just built a mother-in-law suite um, for my mom. Uh, so she's now with us. So I've got my adult son and my husband and my mom. That's awesome. I didn't know you <laughs> built uh, an in-law suite. That's really cool. Yeah, she did. That's awesome. Um, one thing about Kathy is she's seriously one of the sweetest people I've ever met. We went on a retreat yeah. and she brought breakfast for everyone. And it was like this most delicious overnight oats. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I love this woman. <laughs> <laughs> you feed me and, and I will come back like a puppy dog every time. <laughs> so tell me, uh, tell me about, um, let's start with your fitness journey, right? Or your health, fitness, everything. Um, okay. One of the reasons why I brought Kathy on, do you mind if I show your pictures real quick? No, go for it. Um, I, this is like literally one of my favorite transformation pictures ever. Look at this. This is her pants <laughs> that she wore after she lost a lot of weight in one pant leg. Yeah. <laughs> I'm in love with this picture. Literally, I'm just, it makes me so happy and excited. I just love it. Right. <laughs> I have those pants here. Oh my gosh. Um, you can tell by the elastic. I had these, like, they were maxed out and they're a size 28. I don't know if you can wow. see that. And they were, they were like, there's no elastic left in, in these pants. Oh my gosh. So tell us your story. <laughs> what, tell us the difference between then when you were wearing those pants and now when you're wearing that pant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the difference is actually unbelievable. Um, and in fact, if I um, go to like fill up our pellet stove, like that's like a 50 pound bag. And I just can't even imagine that like I walked around with two of those on my body like 24 hours a day. Um, and I could not do that today. I couldn't carry those bags all day long every, every day. It was exhausting. It, life was exhausting. Yeah, it's funny that, um... I can't relate in the same way, but when I was um, pregnant and, and gained a whole lot of weight and then started, you know, losing the weight. And then like a year later, I, I had 50 pounds less on me. I remember working out and being like, how did I do this with 50 more pounds on me? Yeah. It's double that. That's, that's hardcore. And, and you're right. Your joints, like everything, everything. <laughs> everything and just celebrating every little bit like when you could actually like bend over and clip your own toenails without like your stomach like stopping you from reaching it like it's yeah so tell me when what was the breaking point for you like at what point were you like you know what um yeah something's gotta give I kept trying and I, I mean, I have a list. I mean, it was like Weight Watchers, Jenny Craig, Nutrisystem, Richard Simmons, Food Mover, Larry North, Great North American Slim Down, South Beach. Like, I just kept trying and trying and trying. And I think I got to the point where actually, like, I gave up. Like, I was like, this, this is my life. I'm always going to be fat. I'm always going to be heavy and tired. And um, I was actually forced into... My last time, uh, my sister-in-law had called me and was like, me and my husband are starting this workout program. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's great, you know? <laughs> and she was like, yeah, it's, it's 
Power 90 X3. And we ordered it and we're starting. And I said, good for you, you know, good for you. <laughs> and she says, well, why don't you join it with me? And I said, I have asked my husband over, you know, two babies and our whole marriage to, you know, I said, the amount of money I've spent on stuff is like astronomical. Like it just doesn't work for me. It's not in my cards. So next thing I know, she's asking my son, are you going to do it with me? And he said, yes, because he was getting ready to go into the Navy and he did cross country. He was very athletic. He was like, yeah, I'm all in, you know, Power 90 X3. And I said, I'm not buying that. And she actually came over when it was when it was, it was the DVDs uh -huh. with she, she bootlegged copies of them. <laughs> so I was <laughs> the worst startup ever. Like I had like a bootleg illegal copy of power 90 x3 in my living room <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so the, ne the next day we all start it and there are 30 minute workouts if anybody has never done power 90 x3 and i think maybe i got through 10 minutes of it and like modifying like greatly like a lot and um i think the breaking point where i actually started to do it like you know for me was one it was the first week and i'm on the grounds and you know we're supposed to be doing push-ups and i just i just collapse i'm laying there on my living room floor and i just start bawling my eyes out and my son walks out of his room and he's like you know at first he's like joking and he's like there's no crying in push-ups you know <laughs> and um he could tell i was like you know then like sincerely like upset and he was like what's going on? And I said, I can't, I can't do this. I said, this is not going to work. How is it going to work if I can only do 10 minutes of a 30 minute workout and I'm done. And he was like, you know, sometimes you need like your kids to like teach you something. <laughs> and he was like, well, that's 10 minutes more than you did yesterday. And I was like, okay. And, um, he said, so maybe tomorrow you can do 11 minutes of it. He's like, just keep going. So I said, all right, okay. Woke up the next day. And by the end of the program, I was able to do the full 30 minutes and I had lost 30 pounds. <laughs> That's so, I should have brought my tissues. <laughs> <laughs> That's so awesome. Is he a yeah. coach? We need to talk to him. <laughs> Amanda said, best coach ever. <laughs> right? <laughs> it's so true. Oh my gosh. I just, that is, that's so true. Like you do 10 minutes, it's more than you did last time. And you just add a little bit as you go and you're right. And you know what? Even now we do programs that we can't, we can't rock them right away. They're super crazy hard. And um, I was always like an all or nothing person. Like if, if I can't do this, Nutrition plan, 100%. There's no sense in doing it. If I can't do this workout program, 100%. There's no sense in doing it. And I was missing out on like the, the 25%, the 50%, the 75 you know, because I just right. threw it out the window. Oh my gosh, I love this. <laughs> you got me speechless. I don't even know what to Sorry. say right now. So no, that's okay. Um, so from there, you did P90X3. Yes. Um, they are 30 minute workout programs. Um, some people tend to do a program and then like they got their results and then they drop off the face of the earth. Right. right? So what kept you going after that? Um, the, just the, the more energy, the, you know, let's face it, the size, smaller clothes. Um, I was able to start doing stuff with my family that I never could do. Like I was not, even trying, like my husband and my son were scouts, loved hiking. I would stay home. I would stay home. I was going out hiking. I was, you know, I actually went and bought a bike. I got on a bike for the first time in my life since I had been like 10. <laughs> um, so just the, the actual, um, I guess, what should I call it? Like freedom, yeah. you know, being free of the pounds was also freedom and opened up my life as well. And that's what kept me going. Right. It's incredibly restricting to have yeah. so much weighing you down. Like it's restricting. Mm -hmm. You can't do a lot of stuff. Um, 
So let me ask you, that first time you did P90X, what did you do for your nutrition that helped you lose 30 pounds? Um, I started out, um, I tried the uh, containers uh, for a couple weeks. It was um, really hard for me being vegetarian, um, but I stuck to it as, like, as best as I could. Um, yeah, I wasn't sure. You were already vegetarian at that point? Yes. Yes, okay. you can be a very fat vegetarian, yeah. <laughs> so let me ask, um, so back in the day when that was out, um, they said you could do the 21 day, like the container system as a vegetarian, but it wasn't the easiest, like they didn't really no, break it, wasn't it down. Really easy. Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying like it was just a little too much for you at that point. It was, it was a lot. I did the best I could. And, um, a lot of the reds, um, I ended up using my protein, um, supplements, um, like, um, you know, my veggie burgers, veggie crumbles, veggie chicken, all that stuff that she said you really couldn't have cause it was processed. <laughs> um, but I was like, Hey, I, I'm, I'm here. I'm trying, I'm following these containers. I'm just, you know, tweaking it a little bit to make it work for my life you know yeah so what after so so at that point did you would you say you were just um you were just tweaking your nutrition as you go yes okay and then what after p90x3 so okay there's so much of your story and i don't know yeah. what lot, timeline it is so go tell yeah. me more so you got into um, your, your fitness journey with p90 that's how you got started yes. um what did you do after that at like did the weight just fall off? Like, did you just lose a hundred pounds in like no, no. six months? <laughs> like how long did it take you? And, and where did you feel like you tripped up and then how did you come back? Okay. So, um, if it wasn't for life, um, and my medical, my two medical emergencies probably would have taken me about 15 months. Um, but somewhere along my journey, well, after Power 90X is when I actually decided to go on Beachbody and get a coach <laughs> and look at what everything else happened. Um, started Shakeology and added that to my nutrition, which that helped a lot because somebody who used to eat like three half gallons of ice cream in a, like four days, um, that chocolate shake was just like it was life um so you finally bought something from Beachbody yes I did <laughs> <laughs> I became a customer um, and then continued all my programs I did hammer and chisel um after that and um no well, hold on a I, second that's a hard yeah. program you did hammer and chisel after p90x3 yes <laughs> Tell me about that. That was that that was a little intense. It was a little crazy. Um, I modified a lot with that, um, which you know it's important for people to know. Like they can modify. You know what I mean? I would love to revisit Hammer and Chisel and like try to do it like full out now. <laughs> um, but I did it the best I could. If we were doing like the step ups and they were like doing twenty, if I got like three, I was like, yay! You know, so that's awesome. I just kept going from there and I switched to like um more cardio based after that like size country heat tried to switch it up and have some fun you know which is why it's great to have all the different programs um so then I got certified to teach country heat um because I loved it so much and I was teaching classes and then that's when life gave me the one, one of the my first one two punch um and I woke up uh October 10th of um, 2018, and it was mine and my husband's 25th wedding anniversary. And he had taken off, we went out together, we went on a hike, we came home, we went out to dinner, and we're sitting in dinner, and me and my husband love diners, so don't judge, for our 25th wedding anniversary, we went to Cracker Barrel. Um, <laughs> and we're sitting there, and we're getting ready to pay the bill, and I went to stand up and say something to him, and it came out all crazy like all jumbled he starts laughing i start laughing you know he's like did you forget how to talk you know of course it's funny you know i go to get up and i'm like blah, 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 you know <laughs> um so i go to respond to him and it comes out the same exact way um we're getting we're walking out to the car i'm still trying to talk to him my words are not coming out 
Um, and this is when we finally decided this is, this is like not funny. This is like a medical emergency. Um, so eventually I'll skip over all the whole medical misdiagnosis and all that kind of stuff. But eventually, um, uh, the next day at St. Luke's, I find out I had an uh, ischemic stroke. Um, so it's a blood clot that stops the blood flow in your brain. Um, so I was hospitalized for a week, um, gained a lot of doctors while I was in the hospital. I also found out my type two diabetes was like, my blood sugars were crazy. Um, they said it could have been a, because of the medical emergency, because when you're sick or have something happen to you, your blood sugars like shoot straight up. But I had like, I don't know if anybody knows blood sugars, but my blood sugar was over 600 during the time of my stroke. Typically it's supposed to be under 100? Um, for uh, when you first wake up, it's supposed to be under a hundred. Um, after eating, it's supposed to be under 180. Mine was over 600. Um, and I didn't eat that much at Cracker Bar. <laughs> uh, so that really, um, really set me back. Um, I didn't feel anything. It didn't hurt. Uh, the next day in the hospital though, is when like it hit me that the exhaustion, you know, and they were like, it was a brain injury. Like, you're going to be exhausted. You're not going to be able to do things. Um, there was a little bit of memory loss, which was the most freaky part. Um, and by the time I got home, uh, my husband had been remodeling our bathroom right outside our bedroom. So I couldn't even use it. I had to go downstairs to use the bathroom. And if I woke up in the middle of the night, he would walk down the steps in front of me. So I would not fall down the steps um <laughs> wow so um my mother totally came she's throw you back what's that i said that's totally gonna throw you back i mean <clears throat> yeah. you we're seeing so much progress <laughs> um yeah at this point i had lost maybe like 80 pounds wow um and so it was it was really disheartening for me to not to be able to do i couldn't do anything um did you feel that, like, when you were going through this, were you more concerned, like, this is my health and it's totally, like, this is scary as crap? Or were you also oh. feeling like, I just started doing all this activity and now this happens to me? Yeah. You know? <laughs> I was like, isn't this a kick in the pants, you know? Um, but I was like, I guess maybe stuff caught up to me, you know, just the years from, of just, you know, not caring, you know? Um, they still don't know why I had the stroke. Um, so, and they said it's not uncommon for people under 50 that have strokes. You never find the reason why. Like they said, it could have been even just a little piece of cholesterol that broke off from an artery and got lodged on the way. It could have been, it could have been anything. They have no idea. Um, so my nutrition had to be on point after that for, for the blood sugars and for the endocrinologist. Um, but my body's always been very stubborn. And if I'm not working out and nutrition, I don't really, I don't lose. Uh, so there was like a little bit of rebound gain during that. Um, I did try to pull up some of the um, beach body on demand and I did some upper body cause I could stay seated. Okay. Um, so that's, that's I would. Awesome. Yeah. Like that's it. Yeah. So great. That is such a non-excuse like mentality. Like, no, I'm going to do something. Uh, yeah. Well, especially, you know, you sit there and you're like, you know, I had 600 blood sugars. I've had a stroke. Like this is like life or death. Like if it wasn't always, it definitely is like now this is like a serious matter, you know? So I had to do something. Um, so I would put on, you know, like upper body fix or something like that. And I would sit in my chair and I would just do the, I would do that as best as I could. Um, amazing. I don't know if you've seen her and I can't remember her name, but we had this program side and there was a girl in a wheelchair who used to teach mm -hmm. other girls in wheelchairs. And I was always like, that's freaking awesome. Like you're teaching a dance program in a wheelchair and that's just, yeah. you know, like cutting the excuses and finding a way to do it. Yeah, I've seen her. She's really inspiring. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but this is just this is amazing. Um, Kaylee said, did your husband end up joining you in your healthy journey after that? Um, you know, my husband's always eaten healthy. Um, 
he does not work out, but his job is manual labor. So his job is kind of like a workout every day. So he's like, you know, he, can eat all day long. he does it <laughs> in and out. He's, you know, the same weight he was in high school, you know, <laughs> let's strangle him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> so how long did it take you to be able, I mean, like, to start gaining energy and to start I mean it had to have been totally different learning how to work out again at that point like it it definitely was I mean I was going to bed at 8 a.m and waking up at I mean 8 p.m and waking up at 10 a.m you know and they said that that you know your your brain needed the the sleep you know so um I would do that and then to be honest with you my husband was scared for me to work out like by myself at home afterwards. So that's when he bought me an exercise bike and I started on that because then my butt could be seated, you know, seated and I could try to incorporate some cardio till I was strong enough to start doing like the country heat, the size that, you yeah. know, and then bring that back in. It makes a ton of sense. Yeah. <clears throat> so. After- and yes, I did um, add in um, to be mindset. I think somebody asked. Um, oh yeah, do you follow any nutrition, nutrition plan right now? Yeah. Do you follow? Right any? now, I do. Um, to be mindset, yeah. And prior to that, you were still just tweaking as you went along. I was tweaking as I went along. I was trying to go generally by by the containers, um, and then when to be mindset came out, and it was a little bit more freeing for me as like a vegetarian because she allows all those, you know, beans and. Yes, and the like, meat the meat substitutes that we all love, like the Impossible Burger and, you know, all that kind of stuff. She's, she's on board with all of that. And I was like, okay, this is a program that, like, I don't even think I have to tweak, you know? It's Yeah. I feel it's like the meat substitutes... Me. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, I feel like the meat substitutes have changed over the years, too. Like they, They're a little more healthier now. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, but I don't think Autumn is still let up on a lot of those. Um, <laughs> which I understand they're processed, you know, it's processed, you know, yeah. it's not a natural product, you know, it, it was created sure. by me. So I, I get it. Now, like you're finding all plant-based, not like, I mean, it was always plant-based, but just better ingredients. Yes. In those, in those items. Um, Absolutely. So that was your first like huge setback. Yes. But since then, you've had another big setback. Yes. So, um, not last month, but January of last year, um, me and my husband had gotten really sick. Um, it, it, we had the flu. Um, we went to the doctors. They really, you know, they were like, go home. You got, you know. <laughs> um, and the one morning I woke up and I couldn't walk straight. Um, I was walking down the hallway. I'm banging into the walls. I was like, what is going on? Um, and I said to my husband, I don't, I don't know what this is, but you know, it's crazy. And he says, all right, well, we'll bring you the doctor, you know, if you feel you need to. So I'm like, at this point, I'm like, "Ah, I survived a stroke. I'm good. You know, so (laughs) like, I'm just a little dizzy. It's fine. Um, so the next day I wake up and I'm still hanging onto walls as I'm walking. And he was like, we're bringing you like get in the car, we're going to the ER. So I said, okay. And I'm thinking they're going to tell me, you know, I'll go home. Here's some fluids or this or that. And they're like, no, we're admitting you. Um, because you have prior history of stroke and we want to make sure you're not having another one or you had another one. So at this point, like I'm scared. I'm like, oh God, here we go again. You know, it's been like a year and a half. I better not be stroking out again because this is ridiculous. Um, (laughs) so uh as I'm in the hospital they admitted me I think for four days that time you know MRIs CAT scans they rule out stroke you know so I'm like oh thank god you know so what is this and they said well it could be you know a number of things we just believe it's like inner ear so I said okay um and as we keep going every day I can hear a little bit less out of my right ear. And I keep telling them, I can't hear, I can't hear. And then finally, the one day my mom called me on the hospital phone and I picked it up 
and I'm going, there's nobody there. And I switched to the other ear and she's like, hello, hello. And I'm like, oh, there you are. Um, so uh, they sent up an, an ENT and, you know, they did tests. I had to go into their, um, their office here. Um, apparently a rare side effect of flu is nerve damage uh, to your inner ear, which can cause permanent hearing loss. Um, so I found out I was permanently deaf in my right ear. Um, they did try some steroid treatments where they inject steroids through your eardrum into your inner ear to try to like stimulate those nerves. Um, but that did not work. So unfortunately the imbalance was from that and it wasn't just like going away. So that was the, ne that was the next set that, you know, the second setback. Um, and I had to go to um, vesticular therapy. And what they had to do was had to teach me to retrain my brain how to rebalance itself without hearing on the right hand side of my brain. Wow. Uh, so during that time, I really was not able to, I mean, I was sticking to the, the 2B mindset, but I was not able to do, I was, I, I, it was very frustrating because I think one day I broke down and actually cried because I was like, I'm right back to where I was after my stroke. I can't do anything like that. Yeah. And I fought back after that stroke. I was doing, you know, all these programs and boom, right back. It was very, very humbling. Um, Just, yeah. No, I have never had the flu shot. No, I was always scared to get the flu shot. <laughs> um, I'm still scared to get it. I didn't get it this year. <laughs> so um, this is one of the reasons why Kathy likes me. I'm very loud, so she can hear me from yes. all areas. <laughs> okay. No, you're uh, not. <laughs> um, I can't. You know, you are so incredibly strong because you're like, <laughs> you're like. I actually broke down and cried. I'm like, I would have cried like ten times by that point. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. so incredibly strong and resilient and I and I think that is just that's why I find you so incredibly inspiring because you're like you know what crap's gonna happen and oh, yeah. I'm gonna keep going <laughs> like I'm just gonna keep going so throughout this whole journey you've lost 100 pounds yes you survived a stroke you are a diabetes warrior, a diabetic warrior. Is that what you said? Diabetic warrior. I yes. love your profile. I love it. <laughs> I love that you changed it. I'm so in love with it. Anyway, um, Kaylee said you are strong and you love her story of perseverance. Um, it's Thank you, it's incredibly inspiring and you're sharing it too. You're going mm -hmm. on social media and you're sharing it because you know what? People need to know that it's not not the end unless it's the end. Do you know what I mean? Like you're going to keep fighting. You're going to keep going. Um, mm -hmm. Right now. So, okay. So, so one of the questions I have, and I, I ask people who lost, um, you know, a pretty good amount of weight. Was it straight up and straight down? Like, or did you <laughs> this? No. Do you know um, what I mean? Yeah. No, my weight loss graph looks like, like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's setbacks. I mean, like, Yesterday was Valentine's Day. It's probably like this. Uh, <laughs> you know, I went out to lunch with my friend. I went out to dinner with my husband. We had dessert. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's going to go like that. But, I mean, it predominantly goes down yeah. as it happens. So you can't step on. I used to be that person. I'd step on the scale, and it would be up like two-tenths of a pound, and I'd freak out, you know, and be like, it's over, you know. And now it's like, oh, no. It's not, it's going to go back down, you know? Have you found um, just the programs in general? I mean, I have found that just doing the programs in general, even, even if you're just doing the programs and following like one of our nutrition plans, that your mindset changes about Absolutely. weight loss. Absolutely. How has your mindset changed from prior to doing Beachbody stuff to now? Um, well, before Beachbody stuff, like a workout was like punishment. It was, you know... Like, this is, this is what you deserve now for being bad, you know, and you have to go and suffer through this, you know, and now it's like, I'm alive, I am awake, I'm feeling good, what, what, what workout are we, you know, what are we getting into today, you know, 
Um, and it's not all or nothing anymore, you know, it's just, you know, if that scale goes up and it does, like, you know, we say I did a hundred pound weight loss. I mean, ask me, like I said, this morning after Valentine's, it might not be, it might be 99 pound weight loss yeah. and next week it might be 103, you know, it, it just, uh -huh. it fluctuates. And I just try to stay within like five above and five below my weight goal that I had set for myself, which is not standard, you know, I mean, according to BMI and everything like that, I am still overweight. Um, and I'm supposed to be like another 40 pounds lighter. Um, and at, you know, 50 years old and what I've gone through, I feel great where I'm at and I'm not going to let like society tell me some sort of standard I need to, to, push myself into you know if I eventually want to go lower I will but I'm like happy maintaining where I'm at right now yeah so, and that's the important part being happy with yourself which I never was I didn't let, love myself at almost 300 pounds you know oh my gosh I love it so one thing that I've taken away also is that you also said you know working out is not a punishment anymore and you said at one point you said I mix it up to have fun and I've been telling people yeah. this for a while now <laughs> listen we have so many programs and a new one comes out every like quarter if you just jump on the fact that you do the new ones every time they come out you're never gonna be bored right and yeah no that. and you can even revisit ones that you missed you know like right. if you don't jump on there's there's programs I have not done yet which you know, I look forward to trying, you know, so. So I would have loved to ask you a little bit more about your nutrition as well. <laughs> yeah. But I felt like your story was so important and I wanted you to share it and I'm running out of time. So <laughs> <laughs> maybe we can um, bring you back on and talk about what you do eat throughout the day, you know, and yeah. what that looks like. I would love to do that. But I sure. really, really appreciate you. It would be a really boring call. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm, a, watch, I'm a creature of habit, you know, it's kind of like the same three or four breakfast, same, you know. Why don't you send me, if you have a chance, let me know, yeah. like, some of the things that you have, and I'll put it with this video. Okay. And then um, we can just do a package deal. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then anybody can share it to whomever. So thank you so much, Kathy. I just love oh, your attitude you. and your personality. I'm so glad you came on here and shared with us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, thank you. Next week, we'll get back on here. Um, I don't even know the date next week, but the thing's about to close out on me, so I'm going to go. Have a great day. Happy Thanks, Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.